This is Denver Riddle with you here, and in this video tutorial, we'll be reviewing how to round trip a project from client to delivery. I've covered this topic to a limited extent in previous tutorials, but in this tutorial, I want to focus entirely on the process of round tripping. People often ask me, how do you suggest I get the project from the client for grading and then back to them for delivery? Well, I suggest getting the project from the client in a media managed form. This simply means that only the assets that were used in the final edit are delivered to you along with the project file of the final edit. The advantage of doing it this way, as opposed to just having the client send an XML, is that we can make pre-conforming changes to the project before sending it off to Resolve. This will potentially eliminate a lot of conforming errors in Resolve by creating the XML ourselves. If you're not familiar with media management, let me briefly demonstrate how it works. In Final Cut 7, we'll find the Media Manager under File and then Media Manager. With the Media Manager open, we can pick a destination for the assets. Assuming that I'm the client, I'm going to choose my external drive, create a folder for the project, and then click Choose. Now I'll click OK, give the project a name, and then click Save. What this has done is it has created a copy of just the assets that were used from the final edit, along with a new project file that references those assets. Coming over to the external drive, you'll see the project file and a folder called Media which contains the assets. This is what we want the client to deliver to us on a hard drive. All we need to do from here at this point is open up the project file and then we're ready to begin pre-conforming for Resolve. For Premiere users, the same process is called Project Management and we'll find it under Project and then Project Manager. In Final Cut 10, it's a slightly different process, but how we do it is by bringing up the project library, right click on a project, choose Duplicate, give the project a name, choose our external drive, and set the radio button to duplicate project with used clips. Finally, we'll click OK. We'll now find the project file and the assets on the external drive with the project file found in the Final Cut Projects folder and the assets found in the Final Cut Events folder. These are the two items that we'd want to get from the client. Now, the reason I explain all this to you is so that you can become familiar with the process of media management. That way, you can explain to the client what you're looking for in order to grade their project. Okay, so let's now take a look at moving the project into Resolve. The easiest and best way to do this is with an XML, and because we have the project file to work with, we can make any necessary changes that will make the conforming process easier. It's a good idea to start by exporting a self-contained version of the video. That way, we have a reference that we can use during the conforming. Next, it's good to create a duplicate of our sequence. That way, we can reference the original in case we screw something up or need it as a resource in finishing the project. Now it's time to cut out all the fat. If the sequence is bloated with hidden video tracks that'll never be seen, then it's a good idea to chop these out so that way we're not grading any clips needlessly. Next, it's good to go through the edit and to look for things that may not translate well in Resolve. This could be things like clips with variable speed changes, still images, or anything else that may cause conflicts when we import into Resolve. A really neat tip to quickly disable any effects is to select all of the clips, right click, and then choose Remove Attributes. By clicking on the checkboxes, we can specify which effects we want to turn off. Once the timeline is cleaned up, then we're ready to send it off to Resolve. 